it's always nice feeling talking to you again. I hope your day is going really well. So as mine's as I just came back from my first CTPL session from Warsaw, feeling so great, I feel excited and as everything went well. So I wanted today just to make a short video update about how everything went, how the whole exam procedure looks like. So as for my beginning, uh, for my first attempt, I chose to do not too hard start. I chose to do pretty theoretical subjects, so I did the operational procedures, air law, IFR communications and VFR communications. Well, in general, I can say that all the exam procedure was structured really well. Um, what I needed to do is to receive all login codes to the system, and once I got them, I could go straight away to the session and do my exams. I didn't need to register anywhere online, as this is how WASA CAA works like. I don't know how it is somewhere else in the world, but I will be talking about my example today. So. I received the codes, I came to the session, I registered myself there, and I was allowed to bring the calculator to the exam. Uh, it has to be uh, the correct type calculator, it cannot be too much complicated, and you have to show it before your exam that you don't have any secret notes here, formulas or whatever. And as well, you are allowed to bring your phone, but it has to be turned off, so it does not make maybe too much sense to do that. So I came to the session, I sat down to the computer, I logged into the system, and the first exam I did was operational procedures. Uh, this exam contains 45 questions, the time given is more than one hour, so I can say that it was really, really enough time to complete all the exam, to review everything what you did, and just to feel comfortable. Um, by the way, why I bought a calculator to the exam is that uh, however it might seem unfair and uh, however it may seem strange, um, operational procedure syllabus contains great navigation questions. So it can be that you may be asked to uh, calculate uh, transport vendor uh, or whatever and you have to draw a lot, you have to calculate a lot. So these questions are really time consuming as I heard from people. And, uh, but maybe I was the lucky one because I didn't receive those questions, so the time given for me was really enough to complete everything. Uh, then I just stood up after I completed my exam, went outside, got some fresh air, and you can perfectly do that, you just have to log out from the system. Then I came back and started doing air law. This exam consists of 44 questions, time given is one hour, and this is pretty theoretical subject, I didn't need to calculate anything and time for me was as well enough, so I don't have too much to say about that. After that, I did IFR communications and VFR communications. While these exams are known to be as the easiest ones, um, they are really not too much complicated, they are short, they contain uh, 24 questions, time given is half an hour, as well, you may need to calculate some things here. Um, I remember I needed to calculate, uh, my last question in VFR exam was uh, that I needed to calculate the height of the receiver, at which I can still receive a good quality signal transmission. So this question took a bit of time, it took about five minutes, and uh, I managed to do the exam on time, but I don't know what would have been if I received more questions like that. It, it was a bit of time consuming. Um, so after that, uh, once I completed everything, I just stood up, went outside and went celebrating. <laughs> I didn't uh, receive uh, received any paper with scores as you receive your scores once you complete all your ETPL exams. So, so that's it. And uh, what I can say in general, what I wanted to say is that uh, I know that many people do a lot of question banking before they attempt the exams as it is perfectly fine but do not expect 100% same questions in the real exam uh, which you have in your question banks. They won't be 100% the same, they will be slightly different, they can be formed differently, the answers can be slightly different and uh, Exams are regularly updated. Every session you can see new questions, so it's the best thing is just to learn your material which you're learning, um, not uh, to memorize your question bank by heart. 
as uh, those question banks, for example, Bristol Grant School question bank is updated from the feedback from the real exams. So that means that the real exam is way more up to date than the question bank. Um, what I did first time in my life as well, uh, I did aviation exam free tests. I heard from my colleagues that it is amazing th uh, material to prepare from for your uh, ATPL exams that it contains so so cool and great explanation so i really wanted to try it out and i can say that i liked it i liked how those explanations are uh, very descriptive and you really understand what's written there and it really helps you to understand uh, to see the whole picture of the question so in the future i'm thinking about buying aviation exam as as well one thing which i noticed is that some questions were absolutely different uh, where the questions were i never saw before in bristol question bank so it's good to have both kind of backgrounds before you attempt your real exam um, like i said i had pretty theoretical uh, exams now so i thought uh, that i will leave aviation exam for harder and more uh, time consulting exams. So guys, that's it for now. I hope you enjoy the video. As always, contact me, write me on Facebook like you do, comment, share the video, and I hope your day will be really, really awesome. So for now, goodbye guys, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.